Final play day, Master Slash. We have the final play day, everybody, and it's inting for Ruby against Go next. A match for honor. Let's face it, both of these teams are set in their position. Nothing's going to change here. We have Inding for Ruby in 8th place and Go next in uh, the number 7 position here in the standings. Of course, the playoffs are going to start next week, so we'll maybe see some movement there. But for now, the more important part is that in this series, maybe Inding for Ruby has a chance to finish the season strong with an actual match win. That's what they're going to try and do here. It's also kind of funny just coming from the Korean tournament and just see here in Europe again a hero like Utha immediately being banned out, which is kind of funny. The Koreans didn't look at Utha at all. They neither banned him, they didn't pick him, they didn't give a shit about Utha, they didn't care. And then you come back to Europe and the first thing that happens is like, Utha, yeah, let's get rid of him. So we also have my F banned out, we have Genji banned immediately. And the focus here is just different in the meta. That's just absolutely true. I wonder if we see a Vala with an arrow build, which is another one of those heroes that the Koreans in the Fish Cup did not really go for. We saw Vala, I think, one, played once or twice in Battlefield of Eternity, and every single time it was a multi-shot build that got played. So they never really went for an arrow setup that we've now seen multiple times. And there's Vala already as an immediate first pick for... The, for inting for Ruby. So, well, you lose you're also getting banned. What is the red team gonna start things up with? What are we gonna get from them here? Mm, let's see. I mean, first of all, they're really taking their time. I was actually amazed because we started on time. It's something that doesn't really happen all that much. But we started on time. Everybody was here. Five o'clock and go. Oh nah, Hanzo is already in and Stukov. Stukov is actually one of the heroes where most of the regions agree right now that he's super strong. And well, that escalated quickly. So from a Vala first pick, the Zarya and Oriel pick, it's gonna be a Vala hyper carry setup for Indic for Ruby. And to be fair, they played this style already a few times in the past. And if I'm not mistaken, to an extent where was it two, three weeks ago where Zarya was banned out against them uh, with regularity because people after the first map just said like, yeah, okay, screw it, this is not happening again. We're not going to go up against that over and over again. Garrosh gets banned. The reason for that, obviously, is simple. If you play a Zarya on Battlefield of Eternity and you get Garrosh in the mix as well, the speed bubble on level 4 is going to allow him to just run into your team, pick a target, and flip it into the opponent. So there's that. So you always got to be careful around this. Therefore, a good ban for them. Yeah, and with that, we now have the uh, final ban of this phase, so... What are we getting? A Johanna ban. Eh, targeting Wick a, Wick a little bit in particular. Also, of course, a hero that with a blind can maybe screw them over a bit, but not re we're not seeing a lot of Jojo. We've seen Jojo a little bit after the patch dropped, I think on the first play day, right after the patch drop, but ever since then she has been more or less... I don't want to say disregarded, but she's definitely not really a priority for the teams at this point. I think a bit more Diablo, the Garrosh picks that we have eventually. Of course, Varian and Nubarak are still high up in the priority too. And as you can see on top of it, Raxa gets taken. And that was for me, Raxa and Brightwing were probably the two picks that were the most surprising that in Korea nobody made any kind of move to picking or banning them. Another two heroes that were completely ignored in the Korean tournament and that play a massive, massive role when you're looking at Europe, when you're looking at North America, just the Western meta in general. Those heroes just have their play is right up there. Now, final two picks coming in for the blue team, and they go for Urel and Imperius. Okay. Yeah. Space Goat is in. Urel and Imperius are getting taken. And the last pick for Death Knight. Yeah, we need a proper Death Knight here. I want him to pick like Arthas or something, you know, and just run him down. Nah, they, they need more damage. They need something that is putting a little bit more of an oomph behind all of this. Hans alone is not going to be enough. Normally you would expect the range, but you could still throw a Thrall in or whatnot if you're trying to go more than melee assassin route. And there's Thrall! Thrall taken. Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. Well, that sets us up for map number one in the best of five series here. The last and final play day of the Master Slash before we're heading into the playoffs. So without further ado, let's jump straight into map number one. Game number one, Indy for Ruby against Go Next, everyone. We got Mind Talk on Zarya for the blue team. Fish is playing Imperius. Hat on Vala, and yep, there we see it as well. The Fire at Will as the level one talent. No arrow build, instead, full on multi shot setup, even on Battlefield of Eternity. 
Now, technically, that still means that you could go into Monster Hunter as your level 7 talent, of course, if you wanted to. But at least for now, it is a multi-shot setup. We got Nox on Oriel and Baby Houdini on Urel. On the right side of the map, Kelvin on Hansel, Wit on Nuburak, Death Knight on Thrall, Blade is playing Raxa, and Skynox is playing Stukov. And, yeah, are we going to see the Animal Husbandry again? Trolling Thunder... No move into uh, the other thingy. Uh, what am I thinking about? Trash lightning! Exactly, there we go. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what is that called again? Yeah, good old trash lightning. Not taken in uh, this game. No, 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 no. We are going straight in for the green server. And a couple of stacks for Vala here. So yeah, let's see what they can pull off now. At the bottom of the map, oh, already the whip into the wall! Oriel working on it. Knocks straight up with the tools. And does he get another one there? I'm just waiting for Thrall getting whipped around a little bit too. Hat on the other hand, of course, on Vala. is just going to try and get the stacks together. Has to vault out as Anubarak makes the engage. And the follow-up of Stukov is there. But Vala turning it around quickly with the rest of the team. And another whip into the corner. And Death Knight is taking a bit of a beating. Still getting some hits in, but... The move for the camp down here at the bottom. So, good stuff. And Vala is actually stacking nicely on the level 1. So she's already at 9 stacks. Moves out again. Could stay a bit closer to the action for another setup. That's another 2-3 stacks easy if he gets to connect. And there's a kill already against Imperius. And Nubarak and Thrall also down. And that's an easy setup with a rotation from the top. Granting them a third kill. 3 down everybody. And that is big. Big time prime time right here. The big push through the bottom now. Yeah, and that was just fantastic. I mean, at the beginning, it is the kill against Imperius that starts us off. And then, as you can see, both of the frontliners at the bot lane for the red team both die. And they have to push through the bottom where they can now easily take one of the towers down and maybe even get the entire wall here. They are going full on at it. Now, Nubarak makes a re-engage. But the whip to the wall is immediately there. Imperius is in a bit of trouble, but Vala, she keeps on stacking. They drop the entire wall here. And in Ting for Ruby is doing very, very well here in the early game. Good stacks for Vala. They are able to get kills. Three against one in total. And now they can work on the camp before we're heading straight into the first objective of the game. Also, we have on level one the Feral Resilience and the Animal Husbandry. Yeah. Blade always going on a drunken binge in Las Vegas and going for the quick and dirty marriage here to Misha. That seems to be happening every single game lately whenever he picks the hero. But as all of these things go, we normally get the divorce eventually. So let's see if he can, he can survive through all of it. Or if the animal husbandry is going to end at some point as it so often does. Already with getting attacked down here. They're having their fair amount of trouble to break through the setup of the blue team as they're already heading straight in for the objective. But yeah, a little bit of extra attack and damage being done here. As Wit is jumping into Vala with a bit of extra damage against Blade now. They're trying to get the kill here. Urel jumps in and that is the end. The marriage is already over. It just started and then once they sobered up, they realized that it was a really dumb idea. And well, that's a divorce attorney right there. So, four kills to one in favor of the blue team. And I gotta say that the ending for Ruby is starting off well. They haven't won a single series yet this season, but of course they're working on it here. Every single map win gets celebrated, but it would be even more fantastic for them if they are able to finish the series strong with a match win as well. So they're gonna try and see if they can pull that off. And with all of the fights that we've seen so far, and Vala just YOLOing out that multi-shot whenever she can, we are getting a lot of damage for her now too. Uh, first of all, we have Stukov eliminated here as Anubarak is trying to dissuade Vala from attacking uh, the uh, Immortal further. But both of the teams are dropping rather low here. Misha is not dead as well. I would have liked it even further if they would have maybe kept Vala for the stacks, but they need to deal with Hansel somehow. And it's going to be a close one, but apparently Gonex still able to take the Immortal. Would be a bit of a shock if they are not able to do that. Wit is a bit low though, so he needs to be careful too. And Death Knight, ooh, he is out there. He's really out there. If they get any kind of lockdown like this, for example, it's going to be the end of Thrall. And there he it is, the kill against him. Another whip against the Cockroach. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Immortal number one in the hands of Go Next. But even more kills for the team in blue. Blade! No! 
No animal husbandry value whatsoever. Once again he dies. The second time already. And I know, I know, this is not the map that you're normally talking about when you want to go into globe stacks into the extra armor, but given the circumstances here, maybe it would have been the better choice. The Immortal is definitely not going to do anything. They're taking it down before it even breaks through the gate. And Vala by now with her 22 stacks at the 5 minute mark looking fairly okay. We currently got our setup here with 11,000 damage for Vala. Hanzo is a bit high up with a 13k that he brought to the table thus far. But off we go. Yeah, okay. I mean, I gotta admit that once that we have a third divorce here for Misha and for Rexa, I think we're gonna call Blade Ross Geller, at least for the time being, and see how he's gonna fare. I mean, maybe he likes dinosaurs too. If he goes for the Dehaka pick, we definitely know that he gave over the reins. But anyways, wit already far out there. Follow up from Death Knight, but can't really get too much damage done here on the rotation. Now, Urel is already taken to the top, and they're pretty diligent around the camps, I gotta admit. So, doing pretty well here. Level 7 talent, of course, in this case, also give us the Ancestral Wrath again. Mm, ah, mind talk, careful. He is not getting too aggro on this one, but the camp is taken too, and that's the second one. Hat, he needs to keep his stacks up as best he can. And a couple more whips coming from Aurel as she's making sure that everybody is staying at a safe distance here. And stacking, of course, the level 4 as well. That's a bonus. Yeah, level ahead. It's an entire level lead that we're talking about here. Wit again with the attempt to go maybe onto Vala, but nah, not so far. And with the next objective spawning up, the level 10 abilities should pretty much guarantee the halftime show victory for uh, Indy for Ruby. I mean move in for the objective before they have the heroic abilities and you're good to go. So with the ults, we already get the Reign of Vengeance right here. We got the Aegis. And it is immortal time. Okay. I have no idea why these guys are called being uh, called immortal, by the way. They're getting killed quite regularly. So not all that immortal. I don't even know why they went for the ult here. That was totally unnecessary. They would have gotten it anyways. So that seems like a bit of a waste. Halftime show should still be theirs. They don't have to defend Oriel too much, I think. They should be more concerned about taking the Immortal down to 50%. Hawk, or uh, Mindhawk, obviously eating their stun over and over again to get some additional energy, which helps him too. But yep, they make the play for Nubarak. The Cockroach getting body blocked, has to jump out. Halftime show was already won. Still no level 10 for go next, but there it is, finally. And that gives us Sundering. I guess the arrow for Hanzo. I would be surprised to see the meme strike here, but well, we'll see. Nope, there's the arrow. And already the stacking process is continuing again. Arrow connecting in the back. Cocoon against Oriel just as the Sundering comes through. But the kill against Zarya is happening. Well done. Zarya down. And now they can attempt to take down the Immortal of the Blue team. So they start the comeback off with a kill against Zarya. We could still see a bit of poke here. Vala is moving in. The Wolf connects. They're making the play for MP. Areas. Vala with a couple of hits here gets slowed down also as the lurking arm hits hard. Wit gets attacked too. Can they kill the cockroach here? Doesn't have anything. The RNG, it's not enough. And Wit survives. Wit survives. Vala is still at stacking. And they're going for the immortal again. And I think they're just going to be able to take it. Oh, it's close. It's really close. <laughs> but it's the blue team that gets the immortal. Nice. Yeah, that was kind of scary here. Well done. So the Immortal is taken. Seven kills to two. Vala sitting at 38 stacks. And now the opportunity to move through the top lane and do at least some damage. So yeah, here we go. Also, more stacking for Vala as they're trying to take Misha down. Doesn't quite work out. But they should be able to break through the wall. I mean, it's a bit questionable whether or not they can take the fort itself. Depends a bit on uh, how hard they can hit here, but it's a 5 versus 4 because go next has the entire lineup topside. Arrow gets hit, Vazaria eats it. It's a shield for herself and survives just as the cocoon gets blown up so that Aurel can help them out a little bit. And that was honestly solid. That delivers the final blow to the fort as well, and the new Barak is dead. Nice. The new Barak is down. Well done. And Vala is looking at an additional 160 damage on those multi-shots. And that's before the 10 minute mark even. So this is one of the best games for ending for Ruby that we've seen so far in the season. We always talk about their potential for improvement and they're showcasing it now against Gonex, the team that they were not able to beat in uh, the first half of the season. But now it might be a little bit different. 
Then again, to be fair, this isn't over yet, and with Zarya dying again, we can only recommend that she maybe stays a little bit farther back in some of these fights and doesn't go completely to the front line. So here we have our level 13 talents. Still the advantage for Indic for Ruby. Oh, 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 oh careful. Yeah, Vala wants to get a couple of hits in with the rest of the team too. Reign of Vengeance, the Nuborak, the Cockroach, and Wit survives, but Imperius falls. The Sundering against Vala, the Arrow as well, and Hat on the run. But there we have it, the kill against the range damage dealer. Eight kills, two, five, and bam, all of a sudden. It is the red team that is starting to go on a full fiesta here in an attempt to take them down one after another. The double kill helped them to go for the fort and that is quickly taken out. So now we got 30,000 damage for Hanzo, we got 32,000 damage for Vala. They take the camp, at least one of them. The other one at the top side is getting attacked now too. And this is getting a little bit more dicey for, uh, for Indic for Ruby. They're still in the lead. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's fairly even at this point. Leading kills, good stacking for Vala at least. But of course the experience lead that they maintained until now is kind of gone. And on top of that, they have a slight advantage in structures, but it's not really that pressing any longer. So we'll see if they can do a bit more here. All of a sudden, camp's taken on both sides. Next Immortal coming up. The moment of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Immortal number three, and finally we'll get an answer to the burning question whether or not Inting for Ruby is able to take down Go Next. Stay tuned for another episode of Heroes of the Storm Masters Clash in Europe. Alright, so already trying to go for the next kill here. Halftime show. Pretty even split. And Misha. <laughs> Fearless. Absolutely fearless. Somebody suggested, by the way, on YouTube that every single time that Rexa dies, Misha shouldn't just die immediately, but go on a full-on rampage and start to just mindlessly attack opponents until she goes down. And I like that. So that would be a really good idea. Big arrow and Zarya. They always want to go for her, but this time they are not able to drop her. Well done, Oriel. On the other hand, she needs to jump out, baby Houdini. Can he jump out? Eagles buying a little bit more time. And here we go, Urel, the space goat, she dies. They were trying to save her, but they couldn't. Maybe they can still get the shield reduced just a little bit. But yeah, not so much. Top side, Ford is going to take some damage. Vala, of course, she's still stacking, but I'm getting a little bit worried for our girl here. Yeah, Hat with another opportunity. Where's the multi shot when you need it? I'm not quite sure if that was on cooldown, but what would have been a, that would have been the perfect opportunity to get a few more stacks in. And gets another three, and Hanzo chunks down the Immortal on the right side. Kelvin! Lock it in, and big time for the team. So, it's getting, it's getting a bit tricky for uh, Inti for Ruby. They had a great start, but now they obviously have a problem, and a bigger one at that. They're half a level behind, the Immortal is... Mm, kind of strong. 40, 40, 30 percent HP. Uh, let's split the difference and go for 35 percent. But yeah, either way, it's going to do a little bit of ouch. Down here, Baby Houdini is still playing it out with Rexa. Up at the top, they're trying to burn it out. But alles gute kommt von oben. Death Knight with Rexa. Here's the arrow. Missing completely. Nice. Mind talk. Dodging out on nearly all of it. But they're making the play for Vala. Not even that works out. Instead, they're turning it. And that's the kill against Thrall. Oh my god. Hat is going full on monster against Thrall and takes him down. The Kryptonite here. Yeah, the fight isn't over yet though, and this time Urel is in deep shit, so she goes down. Cocoon is out too, they're trying for Imperius again. Vala, one multi-shot after another, they look for a follow-up kill, but the re-engage of Anubarak leads to Imperius death. Vala's at 69 stacks, nearly at 70, Urel dies to three kills for go next. Three kills in total here, and oh boy, it starts to look a lot worse for the blue team. They're about to lose the keep. Hat still hoping to get an opportunity to at least get some additional stacks, and he makes that happen. He has 74 now and gets the kill against Misha, but it doesn't change the fact that the top keep is now down. They're way behind in structures, and this is a big, big problem now for Inting for Ruby. They got the damage output, but the engages are just not crisp enough, and every single time Anubarak sets these stuns up again, it starts to become a bigger and bigger problem for them. 
So, yep, that is a bit tricky now. I mean, the quest, uh, the camp is taken all the way up at the top. Everybody else is just heading back for mana. Thrall down here wants to fight it out, but Death Knight rethinks that very, very quickly as he realizes that Vala is not going to be alone, at least not for long. And, yeah, here we have our setup with 10 kills to 9. And the kill count is pretty similar, but the experience lead is firmly in the hands of the red team now. And go next. They have a chance of locking this in completely. Now, the lineup isn't really too bad for uh, inting for Ruby. The idea is obviously to bring Vala to a position where she can totally carry the team on the damage output. Maybe with the help of Zarya a bit. And she's doing that. We have a lot of stacks here for Vala and she's leading the damage in the game very easily. But they are just having a bit of trouble getting the kills at the right moment in time. And then getting, for example, an objective that they can snowball even further. So, this might be the last opportunity for them. The Immortal is taken by Go Next. They might even be able to get a level 20 talent together with it. And then that bottom keep is not only endangered, it might be a move straight up for the core. That's something that you just can't afford here. So with this, we now have our little move. Mine talk gets already on the mortal so far. There's the stun, into the stun. Vala, Aegis is being used. Nice ult from Zarya on the other hand, and it threatens with immediately. Baby Houdini is in the backline already as they're starting to do even more work here. But that was a clutch save on Vala. And the arrow connects and hits two. The follow-up is there. And they get one kill. And they get two kills. Nicely done. Solid, solid double kill from the team in red. I mean, check this one out. They both move back. And then the arrow hits. And it hits perfectly. The follow-up is there immediately. And with Zarya and also Imperius both eliminated. This translates directly into a huge commitment towards the objective. The halftime show is therefore successfully taken by Go Next. And if they are able to just turn the shield down right now, then this push through the bot lane might just be the final blow. The final nail in the coffin, if they can make it happen. Now we got Hat doing what he can. Thrall is coming in. Vala already getting out of the way. The whip is there too. Uh, but it doesn't really look too good. No. The Immortal is claimed. The Immortal is claimed and it's half a level until level 20. So, yep, if they just get a bit more experience, they should have a chance to have Storm Talents here too. And you can already see that they're doing that. They have two heroes up at the top, gaining a bit of extra XP. The rest of the team is already on the way down to the bottom of the map. And they're trying to flank in here. But I don't think that's going to work for them. Now nah, level 20 talents already. And the only chance that Inding for Ruby has now is a bit of a YOLO move with a flank in an attempt to take them down. Take the battle without Storm Talents. And then go for it. So, well, here we go. This is going to be a bit tricky. <laughs> okay, so. There's the attack. Two level lead. Stats advantage, big, big lead, big lead in, in everything. Stats lead, you have a lead in talents, and they have the Immortal too. 72,000 damage for Vala. They're trying to get the kills. They might get the kills here. Wit is already in trouble. The arrow doesn't connect with anything, and that's the end of an Uberak. They might just be able to hold the core. The problem is that would still leave them with two destroyed keeps. The red team is falling back since they don't want to lose more here. And I don't think that the core is even taking any damage, but at the end of the day, it's still a fact that we're not having a single main structure on the map anymore for the blue team. So they need a big victory in a team fight and then snowball it hard or they're going to be eliminated by catapults in the long run one way or another. So that's another one. But yeah, bottom of the map, Skynox and Kelvin, they're rushing around here. And let's see what else is going to happen. I mean, 78,000 damage for Vala. Yeah, she's at 88 stacks. I mean, it's, it's pretty significant. We're talking about nearly 400 extra damage that, that she's currently sporting. Which is pretty impressive in and of itself, but... If it's not enough to get you the kills, then uh, all those numbers just don't matter. This level 20 talents, once again the Far Flight Quiver has been taken now. 11 kills against 11. But the fact remains that we have still three main structures on the side of the red team. Yeah, nothing much for uh, for Indy for Ruby. They have nothing on the map. Well, <laughs> they have the fountain and the tower. And the gate, I suppose. So three towers, a gate, and a fountain. Are you trying to backdoor? Please tell me that you don't. Alright, they're just double checking if they didn't take the camp here. That would have been uh, an awkward backdoor. 
That would be kind of funny. If they backdoor, get wiped, and then lose. But I don't think that's the thing. Okay. Alrighty. So, now, with all of that, what else? We get 11 to 11 kills. Camp at the top. They're making aggressive plays now. Pretty much the only thing that you can do is play aggressive. Because the longer this lasts, the more that Gonex can draw things out, the better for them, since the catapults will eventually arrive at the core and, of course, scale with time, too. So they're trying to take the camp away first and force a bit of a fight over it. And there it is. Fight is forced. Vala comes in for the damage. Igis is out, but Thrall came in from the top, and he gets Vala. Here's the arrow. Hitting three. That's a lights-out move right here. Aurel is dead. It's a cleanup job. Thrall dies too, but that doesn't matter anymore. Mind talk is also eliminated. The camp nearly getting the kill against Hanzo, but as you can see, Urel dies. The only survivor for now is Imperius, and he's not going to make it either. And more importantly, even if he did, he couldn't stop what's happening next. They don't even have to go for the objective. You can just follow the two catapults at the top and make your way towards the core, and that is exactly what they're currently doing. They move towards the top side. Up to the top right, still the camps are doing a little bit of work, but this is not going to be enough. Nobody is going to be back in time for this either. We got 91 stacks for Vala and 81,000 damage, so way more than anybody else has in the game. But it is still a victory for Go Next. Nicely done. Easy peasy. Well, not easy peasy, but it's a win for Go Next. They take the lead in the best of five series here at the Masters Clash. The final play day. GG and well done. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Okay, game number two. We have Go Next with the lead in the series. They actually need to win it if they want to get the number six spot so they can overtake Team Arthurs. But I gotta admit that during the first game, it really felt for a long time that Inding for Ruby could win the map. And if it happens in the first map of a series, you always feel like maybe, just maybe, they can come through and win their first series. But despite the fact that they played a really strong early game, they weren't really able to bring it over the time. So during the late mid game, they started to fall off a bit. Maiev gets banned again and so does Uther. And now of course, the bigger question. And they maybe put something together here on Infernal where they can play this out. I personally think if they can, they're going to take Vala again. This is Infernal Shrines after all. Maybe if they can't, then still lock in Tychus for the map here very early on. But bans are of course not through yet, so we'll see what's happening with that. Mm. Okay, there's the Stukov ban. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair. Stukov kind of murdered them a little bit on the last one. But do we get the Vala ban now, yes or no? Because it was interesting to see that she made it through, and this is an even better map for Vala, but instead Hogger gets banned, so I suppose Hat is going to pick Vala again as the first pick. Yep, and there it is. Vala makes it through again. They're taking it right away. And with this, you kind of need to react again. I, I want to see if this is early Zarya pick again, if they're just doing exactly the same thing that they did in the previous ones. They're like, ooh, we got our Vala, let's go full on into protection mode, make Vala our hyper carry, and get Tacita in for the shields. Eh, it doesn't work anymore, so get Zarya. Yeah, where are the times when Tacita was just a Q-board, when he just moved in, shield, shield, shield? Do you remember Nurok, when uh, for the team, he sacrificed himself? Played for Team Liquid, Tacita, 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 Tacita. And his teammates felt sorry for him because they said, like, yeah, it just feels bad to see him on Tacita all the time, but we need the shields. These days, one of the few heroes that can supply a shield in the same fashion is Zarya, but we're seeing Dehaka instead. Baby Houdini, the man with the skills, the man with the tongue. He can do things with his tongue that were never seen before. That guy has a homing missile attached to the Herka's tongue, and he hits nearly everything. Chrome is taken, and so is Sonya. There's the Zarya ban. They don't want to risk that she is taken on the last two picks. So, yeah, better safe than sorry. And with that, we have our last the ban in the second map. And what are we getting? What do you ban out here? They already banned Stukov. Ban out one of the supports. I mean, Korea, Malfur would be banned right now. And they ban the birdie! Okay. Bye bye, birdie. He's already gone. Fair. Yeah, I don't want to deal with the gust, I suppose. But that leaves us with Malfur as a potential pick for the support. <laughs> could play around Brightwing, could play around Deckard Kane. Anna also up. 
And yeah, I still want to know what the front line is in particular. Dibble's pick would be kind of neat too. Dibble's pick would be kind of nice. Okay, May and Malfurion. All right, Bird Boy is in. The other Bird Boy, not the flying one. <laughs> oh, Malfurion, you old tree hugger. Scheiß Baumschmuser. So, last double pick. There we go. The fish. I want to get a game where fish plays murky. Am I the only one here? If you have a name, if you're fish, you need to play murky at least once. But there we get Stitches. Stitches wants to play. And Stitches gets a little bit of playtime. With Oriel again, double support, Stitches, Dehaka, and Vala. So they're sticking it out with a double support setup. They don't have Zarya this time, but they want to go for the hyper carrier setup. It's probably a little bit more accurate uh, to put it that way. Okay. Now that we're heading into this, we get our last pick, Death Knight. We still need, of course, a bit more damage for the team. And there's Tychus. Until now, completely disregarded with Odin around the shrine. Absolutely perfect. So guys, girls, let's go Infernal Shrines. Map number two, the 1-0 lead for Go Next as they're going up against Inting for Ruby. Game number two, Inting for Ruby against Go Next with the lead for the red team. Mindtalk on Lucio. For inting for Ruby, going straight into the smooth moves. Yeah, he's a smooth criminal, everybody. Nox playing Oriel. We got Stitches, baseline hook range extension, of course, kicking in on level 13. And we got on the right side the patchwork creation. Yeah, great talent. Bit buffed as well. Same build, of course, for Vala with the multi shot, baby Houdini on Dehaka. And over on the right side of the map, Skynox on Malfurion, Chromie uh, playing Kelvin, Wit on May, Death Knight on Tychus, and Blade is playing Sonia. Okay, time to party and party hard. Let's see, what can they do in game number two? With Stitches and a couple of good hooks, what you normally want is also a follow-up. They don't really have anything, there's no Uta stun, there's no Malfurion root, there's very little that they can use to lock a target down that got hooked. Stitches, of course, offers a little bit more than that. And Dehaka, if he's there, then he can always connect that tongue and drag the target to its doom. But, yeah. Top. Baby Udini already moving in slowly. And, well, there it is. At the bottom of the map. It's still the rotation that you have. Look at that. Bikini Tigers. Oh, yeah. It's summertime, baby. Summer is coming. The beaches are open. And the party is starting. And Tigers, he's showing the guns. All the guns. Two tickets to the gun show, please, baby. Whoop, whoop. Bottom of the map. Quick play also for the next uh, next mercenary camp. I mean, the next one. It's the first one. They're trying to go for the neutral one first so that they have a bit of a better spot taking their own and end up taking two out of the three. Blue team is sniffing that out a little bit later, but they're too late to make a play. Okay. The dwarf gets hooked. The little gnome. And Stitches gets body blocked, and that is a kill, everybody! He wanted playtime, and all he found was death. Okay. So Stitches is down. That's the first one to be eliminated here. Good opening for Go Next. And unfortunate, to say the least, for Indic for Ruby, who all of a sudden find themselves on the receiving end of a beating at the bot lane. That's the first tower destroyed, and boy, that is not how you want to start this up. No, 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 no. We're not even two minutes in, and they already lost the gate in the first tower. That is bad news. Very bad news. And of course, they're, they're putting all their hopes on uh, Vala, but she's getting the stacks. We'll just see if they can do anything with it, because that is already super low. Had is low, Lucio is alone in the middle. There were four talents for both of the teams, and the entire wall is destroyed. I mean, that doesn't bode well for them in the long run. Lucio also trying to get out here. Mind talk. Uh, they can't close the gap, but that might have been the end of Lucio. I mean, again, at the end of the day, I just discovered recently, Lucio is just like the perfect symbol for an Italian delivery boy that is working for... I don't know, Grubhub or something in the Leafers Pizza. So he has a bit of a side hustle. And he has also a real name. And the real name is Luigi. Papa Pizza. Especially when he plays with Kelthas. And he's the one that delivers the salami pizza here. So we're going to call him Luigi from here on out for the rest of the game. Just occurred to me earlier when we had the Korean finals starting today. So, yeah. Luigi doing his thing. And if we look at him, I mean, he's trying to... Uh, basically go for the Elon Musk Wario setup, but it's not working, my friend. We know who you really are. So, level 4 talents are in. 
And I uh, have a little 14 stacks right now, six stacks on the in the rhythm, and all the way up at the top. One kill to zero. Bottom of the map, the Haka could global in up at the top. All right, off we go. Mind talk. He's trying to do his thing here. Luigi gets caught. Luigi, no, mama, no. Spaghetti pizza, right? He's down. Easy kill. <laughs> and the Haka comes in and says, "Like boys, I'm gonna party too." But he is just dying. So that's another one that gets eliminated. And boy, are they in trouble now. That lineup is just not working for them. At least not now. If Vala at some point gets to a threshold, I suppose, where she can have more of an impact than maybe, but... Woof, it's a bit dirty. It's a little bit dirty here. So now we got level 7 talents on both sides, but with the 3 kills to 0, it's already a level advantage. And after they took down the entire wall and towers at the bottom of the map, the siege, the siege camp or the castle camp in the middle is doing some work already. Stitches is trying to stop it and is tanking him in eternity. Sonya is pushing out the bot lane even further, and up at the top they get the arcane punisher and they're pushing this one in too. So, yep, there we go. There's a little bit of a jump. And Vala gets stunned out by it. Okay. And let's go. Yeah. They might take the entire thing. If nobody is helping them out and they're diving deep for it, they might just destroy the entire thing. It's a bit of a problem. Vala is stacking well. Again, every single time you see a Vala, it's always a question of... No, not like this. Luigi, what are you doing? Come on, Luigi. Come on. Pasta, pizza. Avanti, avanti. Ah, Luigi, please, please. <laughs> gets killed by the Punisher. <laughs> I mean, not like this, my friend. Four kills to zero, and they are going for the fort here. I feel a little bit bad for them. I feel a little bit bad for Luigi. That is not... I mean, Mario's gonna be disappointed. He's gonna look for another sidekick. I mean, seriously. Getting killed by the Punisher here? I don't know what you're thinking. So that's now four kills to zero, and a level 10 in their hands. So they can go for the big pressure play now. We got the Wrath of the Berserker. No leap! No leap for Sonya in this game. A uh, bit unfortunate. But there we have our level 10 just taken for a camp. Honestly, I expected them to uh, go for their fort at the bottom of the map. Nice hook attempt. So that was alright. But let's go. Let's go and take that bot lane. Du -du 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 -du. Guys, you have to focus on camps. I like camps as much as the next guy, but at some point you gotta go away from uh, the quick match meta and you gotta just take down that fort. And there it is, Odin, the big back. Takes him down one after another. Come on. One shot after another, fired level 10 on both sides down. They couldn't get the fort because of exactly what I talked about earlier. They went too much for camps, and those camps get just eliminated now. They could have taken the fort, they can still. Let's go. We got the high five for Lucio. There's the hook and the drag. The mini hook. Boro is already out there too. Ice ball. And Chromie. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Chromie down. And look at him. That man is a monster. He is a machine. He is the latest rage. He's what all the girls are talking about. This man, look at him. He comes into the big fights, the important fights, and he does things with his tongue that no man has ever done before. Unbelievable. He is the man. The myth, the legend. Baby Houdini. Tongue Master 2000. Double tongue against Malfurion. And, well, that's an easy kill, and that's two kills. Chromie went down, and so did Malfurion. And all of a sudden, the blue team is back to business. Well, not quite back to business, but they're on their way, you know? One at a time, slowly, steadily, they're making their way over. Baby steps. Baby steps. Middle of the map, that's where the next objective spawns, and that's honestly the best chance that they have. So, now you got an opportunity to maybe make the play. If the fish hits a hook, then we could just see a little bit of action over here. So, let's see. Mm -hmm. Talking about the fish. Fish also needs to be careful that it doesn't get farmed at the bot lane. But yeah, not a problem. At least not now. But here comes the cavalry. Luigi already speeding up a little bit. And here he comes. No! No! He missed one! But he hits the isolation. He hits the isolation, but he just missed the tongue. Man, 
there was praising you and then this happens. I'm not quite sure if I can uh, I can endorse that. Without the level 13 talents, they're not making a play for the objective, by the way. So that's a frozen punisher that the red team gets for free. Total freebie over here. And yep, so far so good. All the way at the top, there's the push, 13 talents. That activates, of course, the baseline for the fishy. Oh, there is no baby Houdini, that man. Baby Houdini would have hit that. He would have curved it mid-flight. Wanted style. And just taking it out there. <laughs> By the way, there were a couple of uh, a couple of movies recommended to me on, uh, I think it was Amazon Prime, I don't really know. Does anybody know, like, the old school, like, old movies and really bad ones, crappy ones? Jennifer Lopez with Enough. Anybody remembers that? Oh my god. That, I, I was forced to watch it in the, in the theater. And holy fuck, that thing is cringe. When she goes for the self-defense bullshit and kills a grapefruit. <laughs> It was the best thing ever. I fucking lost it. I cried tears. That movie is so unbelievably dumb. And then <laughs> when she takes the martial arts classes and her teacher holds up the gra grapefruit, she's going, oh, 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 and she kills the grapefruit. <laughs> best thing ever. You're ready. You're ready, <laughs> grasshopper. Now you can defeat him. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. How did I end up on that tangent? No idea. But they got the freebie on the objective. And again, nothing really too much happening. As you can see, both of the teams are just trying to go for a little bit of damage. They went through the mid fort, and the keep is taking a bit of damage too. But yeah, it, it, right now they're going through the motions. Nobody is making any big commitments as long as they are on even talents. Especially the red team is trying to go to the next talent here before they are making any big fights happen, before they're forcing something. Once they have 16, they can of course do that too. But, yeah, Stitches, you don't want to hook that baby. <laughs> you don't want to import trouble at this point. Not something that you want to do. So, yeah. And in the meantime, we get the next talent in just another second. Okay, and all the way up at the top, baby Houdini. Yeah, trying to get them into experience range. It's an entire level that's still missing for them. But not yet. Yeah, grenades continued. Generally speaking, it's just the red team that is making all the right moves here. They haven't lost a single fort yet, so they have total map control. They lost the fountain in the middle, I guess that's fair. But at the top side, we still have Sonya in a really good spot going up against the next objective once it gets announced. With the 16 talents now in their hand, they have of course even more map control. But the next objective at least is going to be on eye level, so there's that. And we'll see. Vala also. I mean, again, the stacking isn't horrible or anything. It's actually decent. I mean, the 10 minutes in, 11 minutes in, she's at 45. But I just see them taking any big kills here. Unless, of course, we're getting a good drag or a good hook. That's a bit of a different story. If you can isolate someone, that's a total different ball game. With riding in style on the money pick. And yep, there's our level 16 talent now. So the multi-shot build continues with the cooldown reduction on the max hatred stacks. So there's that. And yep, we have the setup as the red team is looking for victims. Okay. Yeah, of course, a little bit more chop, 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 chop from Stitches as he goes straight into the pulverize. Oriel with the Reservoir of Hope. So many dirty jokes in my head. And the elongated tongue for De Haka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's excited. <laughs> well, not everybody. 50%. So, two kills against four. Level 16 for both sides. And it is shrine time. Prime time, shrine time. Up at the top. As the team can make the move now. Blade with the spin to win down at the bottom of the map. And off we go. Let's see what you got. Come on, blue team. Inting for Ruby. Inting for the Shrine Baby. Here we go. That's the opportunity. Mom Spaghetti, right now. Piercing Sands for the Chromester. And can they make something happen? Dehaka against Sonya at the bottom of the map. Dehaka could tunnel in. They're taking control. Sonya still slamming it out. But maybe a chance here. No, 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 no. Not yet. Yeah, Death Knight, he's already burning down Stitches. De Haka, is he gonna help out? Nah, no, he's still dealing with Sonya. And here comes the Putrid Bile. 
Wer ist der Haka? Der ha Oh, und die Misses. No. The Isolation misses, the drag connects, but the nature's cure keeps Chromie alive. And Sonia transitions into the middle and just slams out the keep. The Haka on the way back, a little bit of shame that he didn't connect it properly. And now at the top, Lulcio, Luigi, no, no, Luigi, please. The Eagles, okay. All right, the Eagles, no, no, Tigers. And there's the kill. Oriel is down, Hoodie Girl is eliminated, Luigi is running around and escapes, and it's the blue team that locks in the objective. Blue team gets the Punisher, Sonia got the keep though. Uh, and can they maybe get a little bit more? Uh, they want Luigi, they're not getting Luigi, no, Luigi is a little bit too fast. He runs away very quickly, Luigi is on the way to the referee to complain. So, that's level 20 in their hands. And at the bot lane, <laughs> I mean, Sonya is still sitting here. Doesn't want to get dragged away. Blade, you're going to have a problem. If you're not playing around that, you're going to have a big problem. They want you and they're getting you. Isolation, everything. They don't give a fuck. They want that kill. They're getting that kill. And if it's the last thing that they do, look at the heal. Look at the heals on Blade. I mean, that is quite a bit of time that they are currently saving there for themselves. And what did the Punisher do at the top lane? <laughs> Fucking nothing. Exactly. So, three kills to five. And... I mean, they got the kill against Sonya. So, there's that. Phew. One level. One level to a bridge to get the next talent. So, there it is. By now, we got 60 stacks for Vala. What's the damage looking like? Vala's at 38,000. More than Chromie. Okay, so here's the moment. The hook! And doesn't connect. Vala has not died yet. Vala is the only one on the blue team that has not fallen yet. But yeah, top side, here comes the Haka. Tower already down. And baby Houdini is getting bold. He's getting bold. He's checking everything. There's nobody here. And this is the moment where he has like, finally, finally I can use my PhD in PvE and bring this to fruit. Finally has an opportunity and he goes to town on that fort and he's gonna get it. Maybe, maybe not. He's gonna get it with the help of the minions. And there comes Death Knight and nope. That's just, honestly, if you run around with the flip-flops over here, this is just not something that you can do. And he gets licked. Gets licked. Wit is also getting attacked. There's the level 20 finally and immediately the far flight quiver. Where's the hook when you need it? Fish, fish, fish. Oh! Not like this! No! Boy, we need to talk. Honestly, I, they need to put Baby Houdini on stitches. Can you imagine what he's gonna do if you give him a hook? Can you imagine? He's gonna do things with a hook that Blizzard didn't even know you could do. Hooking multiple targets at the same time? No problem for Baby Houdini. Circling it around people? No problem for him. That man, he can do it all. Give him a hook and he is going to murder them. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be amazing. By the way, we also got the gift from the embalmer. So we have a little bit more damage that you have here. Can stack that as well. So yeah, death timer reduction at this point. And we'll see how much he can actually pull off with this. But anyways, what else do we get? Uh, Aegis has been upgraded into the diamond resolve. A girl's best friend. Oh yeah. Noxy over there. Okay. <laughs> the diamond resolve. How many times did he die? Eh, only one. Alright, I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. That's fine. That's fine. But, here we go. This is the moment of truth. 20 versus 20. Yeah, that's a fight you have to fight. <laughs> if you don't win this one, then you're gonna be in trouble. But honestly, if they win it, they're not gonna win the game, but they can take a couple of the structures down. And let's not forget that Vala is still stacking. Our girl is getting value on the objective. And here comes the big red button. Okay. Fish comes in. Has another dragon gem. Tudini. And he gets out. Okay. Tranquility on Malfurion. Dashing out. A little bit of a lead on the stacks for ending for Ruby. The ice ball in the back. Damage attempt. And once again, oh, Stitches, the time trap! Stitches, Aegis, Nox, and they save him for now. But everybody's low, and there's the big hook against May. 
Uh, they get the kill against Tigers. That's even more important. Then May goes down too. Anything for Ruby, everybody. Oh, oh, Chromie. No. The kill against Vala. The Chrome Star showing no mercy. Gara's little sister comes in with a big, big sandblast. And they get the objective too. The fish is also fighting back as they're trying to go for the damage dealers. That's not the only thing. Blade is there. He wants the slam. Chromie still with the damage. Malfurion ghosting around in the middle in the thick of things. Skynox stands. Yep, the whip. And the kill, Luigi. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Luigi. <laughs> oh, maybe you can't. I don't know. 50 hit points. No. Make it happen. <laughs> And that's the end of that. Oh my god, that just feels bad. <laughs> yeah, they're still not losing the game here, but Malfurion getting out is a problem. And now Mindhog has an issue too. So yeah, the B-steps are already in. And Mindhog is going to get out. I think they're going to let it slide. <laughs> yeah, he gets away. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, top lane pressure is in. They are going to defeat that too. 26 stacks by now for Stitches, as you can see. But yeah, it is absolutely amazing. So the, <laughs> the reduction is, of course, kind of neat on the death timer. Not sure if I really, really would take this one, but either way. Uh, the hook is still coming across. We have 74 stacks now for Vala. That's 55,000 damage. Chromie has taken over for sure. <laughs> it's just too good. Where are those monster hooks? Channel your inner JPL. Come on, fish, you can do it. Channel your inner JPL, give us that hook, and just drop them. For now, they're just trying to drop the double camp that has been taken here. Now, they haven't given up yet. We're 20 minutes into the game, and they are one map behind, but they have not given up yet. No, no, no. Mind talk up at the top. <laughs> With the amazing wave clear of Luigi is taking this. Down here, on the other hand. Yeah, he's getting old. Baby Houdini is getting old. You know, the reflexes and the stamina. It's not quite the same anymore. Not when he was a spry chicken. Young dinosaur. No, 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 no. It's still the red team that controls the entire map. But again, it's six kills against five. So it's not like there's a massive kill gap. The biggest difference is really the structures. And that difference makes, of course... I mean, that's the big part here. Oh, I like that. Double checking the bush down here. Yeah, they lost too many times when they didn't check that. One backdoor comes to mind. But at least now they have the opportunity to do that. Uh, let's go. Next objective is also uh, all the way up at the top. Alright, there we go. Okay, Skynox is ready. It's time for the camps. De Haka. De -de -de -de. <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> it would be nice if you could solo Sonya. He's gonna make it happen. You just wait. The De Haka Sonya solo. It's happening. Okay. Mm, can they? Can they? Can they? No. Not like this. He got so close. No. <laughs> this looked so good. And now that he abandoned the bot lane again, look what Blade is doing. I've seen this movie before. We've been here. We've been here before. That's another keep eliminated. Yeah, they get the kill. And where's Blade going? <laughs> Dude, like, no. Just no. You're gonna die again. You're gonna make them work for... Oh, no, you're not gonna die because the rest of the team is actually here. Okay. So two keeps are down and the objective's are at the top of the map. Baby Houdini. He's getting old. This is the second tongue in a row that he's missing. I think it's even the third one now that I think about it. Yeah, it's not what it used to be. Maybe it needs a little bit more training, you know? Uh, okay, so. Here's the moment. All the way towards the top. The final the final fight. <laughs> As Sonia says, yeah, fuck it, I'm going core. I'm going core, boys! See ya! Uh, someone has to head back, and it's Baby Houdini. The man that has to deal with it. Sonia's just escorting catapults over. But this is a 4 versus 4 up at the top. You can still win this one. Sonia's trying to take the core. Malfurion is already dead. Yeah, he's down. And the fish fully stacked on his level 20, I might add. Sonya and Dehaka are still fighting over the core, but that's a kill and that was an important one. Blade is just taking the minion waves down, one after another. And Baby Houdini, yeah, I don't know, he doesn't miss. Any, I, I think he has a drinking problem. 
I, I mean, we know he has a drinking problem. But in the past, it was just a coffee consumption. Maybe it's that, or he just switched. Maybe it's Irish coffee that we're talking about here. Yeah, whatever it is, it has an impact on him. Yeah, he's off his game. You know, it's just like, dude, I'm sorry. We have to have an intervention here. You know, the coffee, it's not good for you. Maybe you have to drop the... Uh, <laughs> maybe you have to drop the whiskey. No Irish coffee for you, my friend. But instead, are they going to try and go for a backdoor here now? Six kills to six. I mean, top side is taken. The problem, what's going to happen here is that they are going to just hearthstone. They're going to threaten going for core. The team in blue will have to hearth back, and then the objective is moving in and will harmlessly be defeated. And then the uh, game continues. Or they really commit. Nah, they're not. They are not committing. And these guys, they're canceling, they're stopping, they're canceling, they're stopping, and then they're realizing that they're only two. And they're just like, nah. So, yep. That's already an attack here. I would be a little bit careful with only two heroes trying to move in and take this. Maybe a bit of a ballsy move. Blade already. Ice ball. And here's Stitches. Oh, Kurohomi. All right, now we're talking. Now we're talking, and that's a dead Chrome Star. That, on the other hand, is a dead keep if that continues, or a dead core, because now we have all of this coming in. So they get Chromey. Luigi, come on, this time, get him, get him. Ah, attaboy, attaboy. But this is a problem, and it's a big problem, because now they're losing everything. The core, no. It's Winion time, and well, that's game. <laughs> <laughs> Game number two, a 2 0 lead for Go next against Inting for Ruby. GG. It's the Winions. What can I tell you? The Winions take it. A big victory here. Sky Temple now is our third map. A 2 0 lead for Go next in the best of five. As we're heading into uh, potentially the final map of this series yet the masters clash the last play day so let's have a bit of a look uh, and see what they can pull off this time i mean the myf ban is something that they are just once again putting out there and what else are we getting yeah there is the quick ban on uther so that hasn't changed either the sky temple map choice is still a bit interesting to me because i want to know if go next is maybe a little bit of a trick up their sleeves it was them who said that they want to go for the map choice here so that's kind of interesting too and this is always a map where you know like in the back of your head there's like this idea maybe vikings maybe an abatha setup and since they're banning falstead it could be abby and of course if you're going for like an abatha combo you can also like think about samuro third time in a row now vala gets uh, locked in by uh, the boys in blue yeah so far i wasn't really successful i mean the game plan for both games was always to get vala into a hyper carry position once with the support plus zarya and the second time with an easy lock on uh, a double support for them even and here we go next pick is in Double pick. Right wing and Dehaka. They're going full global. Okay, so they ban Falstead. They ban one global. Then they take two more. Good for them. And what else are we getting? I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you. There's a slugger in the near future. There's a slugger that is headed our way. Just you wait. <laughs> and I think they are already smelling trouble. They already wait a second. Oh, Tyriel and Lucio. I mean, they tried once to play a backdoor strategy on this map, and they nearly won against 30k. They pretty much had the game won already, and then they decided, they thought about it, and was like, nah, I don't really want to win, and they just threw it away. So this time they have Tyriel, and they got Lucio. But what are we getting with this? Give me judgment. Go out with a bang, boys. Give the fish murky. I mean, it can't get worse. Go out with a bang. Come in and bah! Material Vala Lucio. Luigi, my bad. Okay. Grey main getting banned. Why are you banned Grey main? Okay. Here come here comes my X Factor. Gimme the slug. Give me the slug. Silvana. Ah, Chen. Silvana's and Chen. This looks a little bit like the old backdoor strategy of uh, Fnatic. 
So, yep. Okay. Um, what do we get? Last two picks here. <laughs> what, what is Baby Houdini playing now, for example? And are they going to go for another double supporter? Is this time Nox Luigi enough? Diablo? And Junkrat. Okay. Diablo? Tyrael side lane? As it seems. Last pick for Wit. I mean, I got a panda, so that's something. I still want the slugger. Chen with a hat. Abatha. Dehaka. Abatha Brightwing. The double Sylvanas play. Or give me a Samuro or something like I don't know. And it's Diva! She's playing to win as usual. Well, guys, that's game three, Sky Temple. So let's jump into the next map and see if the red team can end it here or if Inting for Ruby is bringing it back and puts one on the scoreboard. Sky Temple, map number three. Game number three, the moment of truth. I go next. They want the 3 0 victory. Inting for Ruby. You want to bring it back here in our best of five on the left side, Sky Temple, the fish on Diablo, Mind Talk on Junkrat, Baby Houdini on the side lane, Tyrael with Vala again, played by Hat, Nox on Lucio. On the right side of the map, it's Sky Nox on Brightwing. Uh, we currently have Death Knight on Diva, Kelvin on Sylvanas with the overwhelming affliction on level one. And Wit is playing the Haka this time, channeling his inner Baby Houdini. And Blade on Chen. So, there we go. I mean, honestly, Baby Houdini's Dehaka skills get only rivaled by two players. One is Wubi, and the other one is Sugar Daddy 69 For all of you that think that is a dumb meme, I'm actually dead serious. <laughs> His Dehaka play was legendary. Now, we already have our big brawl in the middle, and had is for the first time playing a game on Vala, but he does not have the uh, support of uh, two supports or a Zarya behind all of this. So, yep, not too much. Okay, Blade gets attacked quickly. And, well, are they going to get the kill here? Not quite. Okay, instead, Hat is sitting tight here. Yeah, it's going straight for the... I mean, the one minute Mark kicks in and the teams are pretty much making the play for the Siege Giants. So there we have it already. We got Baby Houdini at the same time now also doing his thing topside against Wit to have the mobility, of course, in your favor. Problem is that Brightwing can always use the Polybomb to lock you down a bit. And that's what he's going to try and do as the game continues. Uh, but yeah. What else? A little bit of action happening here. Fish, okay, careful. Topside, that's also where we have Wit still playing around and since they have so many globals I really think that they are gonna try and play very heavily macro focused around all of this. Uh, I actually don't hate this. I'm usually a fan of the Warmaster Chen. The white and black skin is the best. The armor just looks really good but this is actually pretty good. A little bit of skin energy that he's rocking here. We got level 4 coming in early. So far no kills but of course a lot of global positioning for go next that they can use. And there's the drag! That backfired very quickly against Junkrat. That backfired heavily. Mindzog was just like, no! Mistakes were made! <laughs> he was trying to damage the Harker, not to put him in the perfect position to activate the drag here. Yeah, they're trying to time the camp a little bit around the push that is coming at the top side right now. So Diva is now locking it in so that they have an easier time defending roughly over here. And that's also why they're not moving in to stop this and slow it down even further. Yeah, just take all the damage here. Uh, mistimed a little bit, but still an advantageous position for them. And as the camps collide together, we have the level 4 talents. Now also, of course, Sylvanas chucking this out even further, disabling the camp immediately. Fish gets attacked. The right wing jumping in, helping Chen out. And there it is, the kill. Easily. Yeah, easy kill against Inting for Ruby's frontliner. Diablo is down. Job well done. And that's, of course, a great opening also as the objective is just now coming up. So they're moving in immediately and starting to go for this. Yeah, Blade. Yeah, he's going to easily make it out here. I mean, in the middle of the map, they're obviously already channeling this. Vala now has to deal with also the mercenary push as it's still active at the bottom of the map. We still see Junkrat going up against the Haka. 
And yep, towards the top side. Nox, a bit low here. Level 7 talents are now in. And they're starting to push even further. I mean, Sylvanas has already helped the bit lane out a little bit. And Mindhawk is going up against Wit, but Mindhawk is very much alone here. And there's the Polybomb, and that's the end of Junkrat. Junkrat down, nice kill, level 7 talents now also, 4 inting for Ruby. Hat gets attacked, and Hat is in trouble. Fat Illidan is already on the way, and that is the end of Vala. Ah, that hurts. Now, they have no shots that they can claim anymore topside, but that's 3 kills in total now against 0, and it shows again the power of the globals. As they're just using it to jump around over the entire map and take them down slowly but steadily. So at this point, the forts are rather low, especially the one in the middle. And Sylvanas has continued to push the bot lane even further, helping out the minion wave that is coming in. Mindhawk is now making a move, but that's already a fair amount of damage that leads to a tower being destroyed and the gate taken down. So structurally speaking, that's a lot of free damage that they are able to get in. Additionally, they are also, of course, getting the kills and therefore a level lead over their opponent. And in we go. We have the next camp taken. Chen is even coming through to help out a little bit. And here we have it. Hat and Nox are coming through. Vala gets attacked again. <laughs> the big fat panda. Yeah, careful Hat. When the panda jumps on you, it's not easy getting away from him. No, 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 no. You gotta be very careful. That bad boy, feet first, straight to your face, that hurts. Caves the skull in and that is the end of it. So, right now, level 10 abilities are ready for them. That gives them also a lead over the next objective, if played correctly. And no surprises here. The top keck plays for Chen. Uh, only top shelf. Only top shelf for the panda. So he wants to go for the keck W right now. And uh, there's still no level 10 for the opponent's team. And the panda's lurking in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to get booped around by Junkrat. Now, I mean, again, it's going to be a bit rough. Vala is going to have trouble. She had trouble enough staying alive in the last few games, even with two supports now that she is pretty much alone. And Dehaka and Chen are both going to aim for her whenever possible. That's going to be even more tricky. And let's not forget that we have two globals on the side of the... Uh, of the red team. So they are going to have some heroes at the top side. They're very likely going to push minions over into this one. Level 10 abilities on both sides. And that gives us the rocket ride. Okay. Rocket ride is in. And that has of course been uh, improved a little bit by a blizzard in the last patch. But they give up on the bot lane completely. They're pushing the middle, they're pushing the top. They're just trying to get more value out of the push power on the lanes than the opponent can get from taking the objective. Yeah, here comes D.Va. So it's a three-man setup top side. And Mindhawk immediately decides that this is a pretty dumb idea. So there's the rocket. And goodbye. Yep, that was nicely done. Wailing arrow by Kelvin. And that is the end of the rocket ride and also the end of Junkrat. It's also the end of the fort at the top. At the bottom of the map, they're still fighting. Bala gets popped as well as Dehaka connects the drag. And this is just an all-around disaster for ending for Ruby. Five kills to zero. Diva has now decided that she wants to take the camp away too. And she gets a bit of an assist by Kelvin as both of them are moving in for the Bruiser camp. At least the shots at the bot lane were fired and resulted in the fort being taken out. But the party still continues and another drag is making it really dangerous for Diablo as well. The panda jumping in once again. Camp is already taken. Teriel eating a lot of free damage. Has to jump out with the Eldruins. And now they're defending the top side. Whereas at the bottom of the map the real party is starting. Yeah, guys. It's a tough opening. Hinting for Ruby. They are in trouble. And a lot of this. Now, Sanctification. Rocket Ride. And I guess Lucio give you a certain amount of boss control that at some point you might be able to use to make some headway around a boss battle. But first of all, you have to get to a point where you can take that fight. And now we even have level 13 talents for go next. Which doesn't make it any easier to get a fair fight out of this. Okay, so in the meantime, a bit of a boombox set up. The drag. We nearly connected this one. But there's the wall stun. Is that the opportunity? Isolation on Diablo. And they're trying to turn it. Immediately the damage right here. Where is... Ooh, rocket right. And... Yeah, not really. So, a bit of damage, but not enough. Junkrat is going to be back soon, TM. Find the fight doesn't even continue. So, there we go. Yeah, no kills there. 
Alrighty, so the next uh, talent is soon gonna hit. You have 18,000 damage for Vala, 18,000 for Sylvanas too. Double Temple coming up, one at the top, one at the bottom. The 5 kill lead still gives them an advantage. And, well, they go for the boss. Now, that is a little bit of a ballsy play. That can work, but that can also horribly backfire. Now, the Haka really needs to come in, and he needs to come in soon. There's a barrel. They steal it. Okay, top cake plays right here. Can they win the fight too? Top lane gets pressured, by the way. And here we go. That's the opportunity to maybe even pick another kill up. Wit already gets attacked. He connects the drag, but the Haka is down. The Haka down. Counter kill potential against Luigi. Lucio gets away, though. And the explosion. Fish rather low, too. But they're all getting out. So it was a bit of a risky move, but I guess it works out at the end of the day. We got the easy pull at the boss, but they lose a hero. That means the bottom fort will be destroyed. One of the temples gets already channeled by Diablo as the fish is moving in. Yeah, the red team can now send Blade towards the top and do the same thing here in an attempt to ensure that they are at least getting some damage in. That not only eliminates the fort at the bot lane if he sticks with it, but it also gives them an opportunity to damage some of the outer defense. Okay, they're really trying to put Mindtalk in a bad spot. The rest of the team is rotating in too. Okay, there's the next play. And goodbye, Rocket Ride gets interrupted once again and that's the end of Mindtalk. Junkrat is really junk. Yeah, he dies again. And at the bot lane, Hat, he survives. 38 stacks for him now on Vala. Baby Houdini gets also attacked. The level 16 talents give another power spike over to go next as they are pushing the top lane. And with Sylvanas, yeah, they might be able to get a little bit more here. That's already some serious shots fired. Diablo is just running straight into the team. And is used as a punching bag. But yeah, that's a good setup. And of course you have the globals all over the place. I highlighted this during the draft already. They just have all the potential here where they can make play after play after play with the Haka at the bottom of the map, just waiting it out, pushing the lane out, giving the team more map control. And yeah. So once again, Kelvin with Sylvanas. Oh, okay. Our man is going for it. Yeah, he's watched Mercy in the Korean tournament, didn't he? Yeah, that Wailing Arrow on the other hand didn't really have the desired effect. Instead, the Haka is coming in, sees Vala, zones out a little bit, okay, the drag, not hitting. 17 to 15, 6 kills to 1, camps are up and they are taking them too. Easy pickings, of course. Easy pickings. Yeah. And with that, we have 30,000 damage for Vala, 32,000 for Sylvanas. Brightwing by now up at the top side. I mean, the game doesn't really change. The way that they're playing it is always the same. They're having some of the globals on the outside lanes to push the lanes, maintain map control, and then they're making plays for mercenary camps and objectives. And that's another one that they can fight over, especially since they're no level 16 yet. Finally, ending for Ruby has the additional talent. Rocket right. This time it hits, but nope. There's the quick duck of the Haka as he goes for the burrow, but he dies anyways, and the blue team locks in the objective. This time, they overplayed the hand a little bit. Go next is on the back foot, and they're getting chased, and they're getting chased hard. The immediate counter pressure against Mindhawk. Everybody is jumping out of the way, and they didn't lose a second hero. That's actually impressive. It really looked like they would lose another one, but the blue team is carrying the momentum now. All the way up towards the next camp, and they claim it. Okay. Easy peasy camp pressure here. Nicely done. Good job. So, yeah, let's take that first. And then, of course, take the fort itself. All right. Okay. Can I do a little bit more here? Yeah, a killer would go a long way. You need to get a little bit more than structural damage in if you can. It's a 5 versus 5 again. So the blue team really saying, guys, we need to do something. But here comes the Arca, trying to go for the drag. Top keg plays are activated as Chen goes for the barrel. But they're not making any big fights just now. And there's a double camp still they have to deal with at the top. Diva's trying to make it happen. And they get the kill against Lucio. Lucio's down. Can they get more? Fat Illidan is jumping after them. One jump at a time, but he gets zoned out by Tyrael. Nice. The drag of the Haka is putting an end to it after all, though. And here comes Chen once again. But the rest of them are vaulting out, jumping out. The camps are both up. Sorry, the temples are up. And that is the biggest issue now. 
With the temples both active, this means that we could very well see a keep fall, especially if they're able to get another hero kill. Mine talk is barely making it out. Diablo is of course back because he had still all the souls, but the shots are being fired now. And thankfully for the blue team, they still have the gates on uh, pretty much every lane outside of the top lane, which is the only one where there's nothing spawning. So the shots are coming in. The bigger problem is the level 20, of course. And on top of that, two seconds on the boss. I think the blue team is going to make a move for boss. They got to do something before level 20 hits. This is going to be a really awkward situation for them. And it's likely... Th they're at least thinking about it. And yep, there it is. They're going for the boss. It's the only real fight before level 20 that they're going to get here. And they know it too. So shots are still being fired as the keep in the mid lane has nearly fallen. Chen could have gotten that. But he has the barrel. So this is going to be tricky to hold. Level 20 talents are in. He has the barrel. Tyrael is trying to take it. Sanctification. And they claim the boss. Nicely done. But the wall stun against Sylvanas might even yield them another kill. They can't get that, but they are winning this right now. They just won that battle, and with Junkrat now taking the final shots, it means that the keep survives. The keep would have fallen. If they would have taken the last final shots in the middle, the keep on the blue team side would have fallen. So this is a double fail for go next. Not only did they not get the key, but they also didn't get the boss, and they didn't get the kill, despite the fact that they had level 20 and their opponent didn't. And now they have to move Chen out of the fight. So that was a real good move from the blue team. I mean, obviously, it's not really the battle that you want to take. Again, we've been talking about this in the past over and over again. But given the situation, it's the only play you can make. And this time it worked out. You might end up in a scenario where 9 out of 10 times you're losing the fight, but this time they won it. And that's exactly what they needed. Oh, but Vala gets blown up. Ooh, Vala is down right away. And that's the end of Diablo. Okay, that's bad. That could be multiple keeps if they just make a play for them. They could go into the middle, take the keep down. They can take the keep at the bottom if they want. They have all the cards in their hands. With Vala down and Diablo down, there's only so much that you can do. And there's a Sylvanas on the other side. So yeah, this is a lot of keeps eliminated. They can easily end the series here. If they don't go for the core just now, they can take every single keep. And then just prep for the next objective. That's all that they need to do here. One keep is down. They're moving in the middle. They're doing the exact same thing as well. And yeah, that's a double keep eliminated. And they're not stopping. They're going straight up to the top lane to take this one too. And that is going to end the game eventually. Because, well, there's still a temple up at the bottom of the map. And then another level missing until ending for Ruby has the level 20. Doesn't seem like they're sticking around. So they can't get a kill just now. Just falling back. But that, that hurt. Yeah, that's a checkmate right there. Unless they're throwing the game themselves now, this is more or less over. Yeah, this is rough. This is really rough. 10 kills to 2. And again, shots down here. It's not really a whole lot of shots, but they are fired against the core right away. We're barely scratching the shield, but of course, if you want to have the next objective spawn, you need to take it. So yeah, you need to go for it. But yeah, let's see. What do we get? Uh, next, uh, <laughs> well, next camps are up, so they can go for the camps take those mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it's a rough spot to be in even with the level 20 that they finally have I mean they got the battle at the, the holy arena they got the the hell gates far like quiver but they need kills they need to get momentum somehow and the Haka should really take those shots. I mean, only if you take the shots is there going to be another wave on the shrines. And shrines are working in your favor. So I have no idea why they don't go for the shrines. If they don't know where they are, that's fair. But they really need to make that move. Because it's a move in their favor. Inting for Ruby has no interest taking this. Because if another double temple, for example, spawns, that's a big move against them. So now that they know what's going up here, Chen, he might have to barrel out. Honestly, there's no reason why he wouldn't just activate the barrel. doesn't have to, but it's an easy play. Finally, we're going to see Wit on this. Now, again, the core is not going to take damage. Hey, well, if it does, then it's like 98 or something. It's going to be five shots now. But the only thing that you do is you're trying to eliminate the objective so that the next one can spawn. And then you are in the best spot ever. Okay. So now 10 kills to two. Boss is on a one-minute timer. Yeah. That, of course, is going to put the boss on the map. And we also have the objective set up at some point, And that makes it even trickier. Yeah, the problem for Indie for Ruby is also they can't simply go for boss at this point, right? Because if you don't know where your opponent is and you make a move for boss, they simply go for core and it's over. So, well, 68 stacks for Vala. I mean, it's been stacking pretty decently in all the games. 
but it doesn't help them. Yeah, the Hark already at the bottom. As the game continues, the catapults also get stronger, and that's of course another issue. You have a single temple coming up this time. In the middle. So the temple is going to be one of the hotspots, and another one is going to be the boss in uh, 30 seconds. And then of course the core itself, that you can always try the back door. So a two-pronged attack by go next would end this. And what the blue team needs to do is they need to find a target and take it down. And yeah... <laughs> Chen is just going for the full-on barrel here, as the rest of the team is pushing a little bit. There's no problem for Chen in a situation like this. As long as they can't kill him, it's all Gucci. And they have the globals as well, so that helps, of course, with even more presence on the map. And that translates directly into pushed-out lanes, especially with the help of the catapults. And here's the move. They're trying to go for the boss. They kind of have to. Hasn't been sniffed out yet, but of course, the immediate reaction, as I already explained, is that they're going to go for the core. And there's the kill against my dog. So they're going for core now. The Haka is interrupting some of the hearths. Vala is about to die. Yep, Vala is down. Gets soloed by the Haka. And that is the end of the series as Go Next takes the sixth place in the standings with a 3-0 victory over Inting for Ruby. Nicely done. Great series by them. GG and well played as they lock in the final victory on Sky Temple in this best of five. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.